Today we'll be doing various things to extend the life of my trusty 13 inch 2015 Retina MacBook Pro. Uh, things such as cleaning the internals, renewing the thermal paste, and fixing the speaker. This five year old base model MacBook Pro has been serving me really well over the years and I've been using it to design and develop software, edit photos and videos, run virtual machines and bootcamp windows, and I've been impressed by its performance considering it's just a base model. But recently I've noticed that it's been running hotter and slower than usual, so I thought maybe it's time for some internal cleaning. While we're at it, why not renew the thermal paste and why not piggyback that speaker fix while we're at it? So let's begin. Although the step that I'm very excited about is renewing the thermal paste, uh, we have to clean the internals first, we have to get the dust off first before opening other stuff. So that's what we're gonna do first. But before touching anything inside the machine, most important is to disconnect the battery so you don't damage the machine. So now I'll remove the fan and heat sink. and I'll brush it off using the brush, the same brush that I use to brush dust from a keyboard. I also use microfiber cloth to wipe down areas. After removing the dust, it's time for the exciting part, which is renewing the thermal paste. For this job, I went with the Thermal Grizzly Crayonaut Thermal Paste, which based on my research was one of the best, if not the best, thermal paste you can get. It's also very expensive relatively to the other thermal paste, so we'll see later on the benchmarks if it really did improve anything. So let's remove the heatsink and let's clean the copper plate surface and the CPU die surface. First, scrape off the old paste using the flat edge of your plastic spudger. Then rub down the rest with a microfiber cloth and pure alcohol, not the ones with moisturizer and stuff. Now that everything is clean, it's time to lay down the new paste. The general advice here is more is better than less. If you put more than you need, the pressure between the plate and the CPU die will flatten it down and squeeze out the excess. Whereas if you put less than you need, then you will risk not having enough heat transfer between the CPU die and the copper plate. So just err on the side of more, but don't go overboard because it will also cause harm if you put way, way too much. Okay, it's done and now it's time to put it back together. Make sure to apply even pressure on the plate so that the paste will spread evenly. Next thing we'll take care of is the speaker. Back in 2018, I fixed the same speaker, but the same problem is back again. But I'll do the same fix because it's cheap and straightforward. What's different this time though is I'll use a better, stronger adhesive. So hoping it will last longer than the previous fix, which lasted two to three years. I'll link that speaker fix video if you want to see that in detail. All right, so let's remove the speaker to access the speaker cone. And then let's apply enough adhesive to bond the cone back to the speaker assembly. Then let's wait for it to heal, then reassemble. Alright, we're finally done. It's time for benchmark to see if any of this really did something good. Um, we're gonna use Cinebench R20 for benchmarking and Intel Power Gadget for monitoring the CPU. So this one was before the procedure, and then this one is right after the procedure. Then finally, this is the one after the procedure and using max fan control to kick in the fans earlier and harder. By the way, my bad for taking third screenshot a few seconds late, but that's no big deal. You can see in the power and frequency chart to the left that the system throttles the CPU to take control of the temperature. Compare this to the chart in the middle, yes, the temperature is very similar, but no, the repaste and the cleanup wasn't a failure because look, there's no more throttling. So now the CPU is able to sustain max performance while keeping roughly the same temperature. Now, out of curiosity, I tried using Max fan control app and the results are pretty interesting. 
for the most part you get a roughly similar performance, but you do get a considerably lower temperature. See here that the line never crosses above 100 degrees Celsius and eventually goes down to 93 degrees Celsius. Which made the chassis less hot and thus improving comfort while using the machine. So with this maintenance work, I'm looking into getting two, maybe two years more out of this machine. By then, the Silicon Max might be mature enough and by then maybe I can upgrade to the latest MacBook. Until then, I'm pretty sure this machine has got me covered. Anyway, I'm kinda curious what you guys think about this whole procedure, if it's worth it or not, just created a new machine. If you're still here and you find this interesting, consider subscribing, maybe you like my other contents. And that's it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.